Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Life has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. My purple envelope dropped through the letterbox this week. I don't know whether you've had yours yet, but it's got all the information that you need in order to fill in the census. The National Census is a once in a decade opportunity, a once in a 10-year activity to collect all the data, all the numbers, all the statistics about our life in Britain today. It's all about the facts and the figures. Over the last 12 months, our lives seem to be dominated by facts and figures. Whether it's the number of hospital admissions, the infection rate for COVID, Numbers of people, millions of people in fact, who've had the virus. These numbers have all dictated whether we're in lockdown or not, and how fast or slow the restrictions are, and whether and when they're going to be lifted. And of course, the saddest figure of all is the number of people who've died because of Covid. We become obsessed with all this information, all this data. But behind each number, behind each single figure, there's a person, a family, a story to be told. Behind every death lies a grieving family. Behind every vaccination could be the very first time that person has stepped out beyond their front door in months or maybe a year and talked to someone face to face. We are more than just a number. And we can see that behind that story that we've heard, that meeting between Nicodemus and Jesus and the conversation. Nicodemus was a Pharisee And many Pharisees were hostile to Jesus and what Jesus was trying to tell people, what Jesus was trying to teach people. But this Pharisee, Nicodemus, he had questions that he wanted, that he needed answered. And it was only Jesus who could do that. So maybe to protect Nicodemus's reputation, Nicodemus chose to meet Jesus at night. And likewise, Jesus would have been aware of his relationship with the Pharisees. Yet Jesus was prepared to meet Nicodemus, to hear his questions and to answer them. For Jesus, Nicodemus was more than just one of the Pharisees. He was an individual with stories to tell, with questions that needed answering. And Jesus was the one who he reached out to and the one who responded. God looks on each of us as individuals with our own worries, our own concerns, our own stories to tell. This is what makes us who we are. And God knows us so well. God knows us so very well 
that he counts the number of hairs that are on our head. But it's not just knowledge. God reaches out, God responds to each one of us as if we were the only person that God had to be concerned about. We aren't a number to God. We are the focus of God's attention. Today's Bible passage contains one of the most well-loved verses in all of Scripture. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We've probably seen this verse on posters, on bookmarks, on placards, inside and outside the church. And maybe its very power has been dulled by repetition and familiarity. But there is one word in that verse that stands out for me. Whoever. Jesus was given for us that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. There are no barriers to jump over, no qualifications to achieve, no thresholds to cross. The gift of eternal life is given to anyone and everyone. In fact, God's love for each one of us is so great that even if only one of us responds and believes, then that's enough for God. To God, we are much more than a number or a statistic. We are loved and treasured so much by our Heavenly Father. And that's why God sent his Son for us. To be light for the world. To bring healing to the world. To be love for the world. And to be hope for the world. But more importantly, far more importantly, to be light to be healing, to be love, and to be hope for each one of us. Let's pray. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you out into the world this day to be light and love, to be healing and hope. So go now and be light for the world. And may the grace and peace of God the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>